Whoopi Goldberg stars as a nightclub singer who hides in a nunnery to escape mobsters in the comedy Sister Act. It's one of four new big summer movies we'll be reviewing this week on Cisco and Ebert, including Alien 3 and Far and Away. And Roger went far and away recently to the Cannes Film Festival. He'll have a special report. I'm Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune. And I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. Our first movie is named Sister Act, starring Whoopi Goldberg as a Reno lounge singer who witnesses a murder and hides from the mob by entering a convent under the Witness Protection Program. That's a great idea for a movie, and Goldberg is good in it, but apart from some isolated comedy scenes, the movie seems strangely low-key and low-spirited. It doesn't have the zest we'd expect from this material. One of the downers in the movie is Maggie Smith as the mother superior. She doesn't approve of her latest nun, which is no surprise, but it's depressing when she plays her entire role as if this is serious drama. Mary Clarence, I think you might enjoy a ritual fast. A ritual fast? No, 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 I don't think I would. I'd just put a little salt in it, it'll be fine. Look, I'm gonna have to pass me the salt over there. A fast? To remind you of those who must endure without food. Escaping the cloistered life in the convent, Whoopi inadvertently leads a couple of the nuns across the street for a night out. Some of the best moments in the movie belong to Kathy and Jimmy as a nun who always seems about to suppress a giggle. Oh, it's shoebox. Oh, one song, one song. No, 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 no. Come on, he does. All right. It'll come back to you tenfold. Thanks. Hurry up. Hurry up. I love this song. Eventually, she's appointed choir director and brings an unexpected taste of Motown into the Sunday services. No handsome face could ever take the place of my God. My God. He may not be a movie star, but when it comes to being happy, we are. He's not a man today who could take me away from my God. Let's take it home, ladies. There were moments in Sister Act when I did laugh loudly, but unfortunately they were mostly in the coming attractions trailer, which I saw three times before I saw the movie, and which gives away most of the movie's surprises and plunders almost all of the jokes, so that seeing the film itself is a curious case of deja vu. But at least the trailer was put together with high energy and zeal. The movie itself seems slower and less high-spirited, and the director, Emil Ardolino, has no apparent style at all, either visual or comedic. The movie feels as if it were directed out of a textbook, and when Whoopi gets a laugh, it's because of the dialogue and because of her performance, with no thanks to the lackluster filmmaking. You know, I would say I wouldn't fault the director as much as I'd fault the writing here, because my take on the picture was there isn't a scene in this movie that isn't what I would have expected if yeah. you told me the plot. You're going to see the stern mother superior. You're going to see uh, the fat, jolly nun. Mm -hmm. You're going to see the shy nun. Uh, then you're going to see Whippy uh, charm them and bring soul to the people that are supposed to be saving our souls. And then you're going to see the guys that are trying to get her fought, catch up to her, and we're going to have a little chase action. This, it marches you know, along. And it, here's what's strange, Roger. The crowd I saw it with liked the picture a lot, applauding. Yeah. But I thought it was so flimsy. I felt bad that I wasn't enjoying it, but no. it was so flimsy. You know, the problem with a screenplay like this is that in Hollywood, they have basic formulas. You bet. They <laughs> pass them out, they Xerox them, they teach them in screenwriting school. You find out exactly where you're supposed to be at the 30-minute mark, at the 60-minute mark. Watching this movie, if you can kind of forget exactly what it's about, is like watching a hundred other movies because the formula is exactly the yeah. same. And that's why it felt so predictable and to you. So when, when something is funny, it's because Whoopi and the other uh, people are able to find something in themselves to yeah. make it funny. There's nothing really there for them to work you with. You said you laughed. I did not. 
next movie, and our next film is the teenage comedy Encino Man, which badly mixes the juvenile humor of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure with the storyline of E.T. A couple of California Valley guys find a Cro-Magnon man in their backyard. They defrost him and bring him to school. Can you see my locker? Poor Stone Age. He spent a million years chilling a block of ice. Now he's got to go to high school. Oh. Who's that guy with the dork squad? Oh, my God. He's totally rude. Totally. That's Brendan Fraser as Link, the Encino Man, assisted by Sean Astin, and Pauly Shore from MTV as the wigged-out Stoney. Here the boys have their idea of fun at a convenience store. I'm sure the managers of all the 7-Elevens nationwide are going to love this scene. Link and I are cruising the mountain, bro, and we figure we's a little juice. No, we sing the juice. We's the juice. No, no, we sing the juice. No, we see the juice! Oh, he's the juice! Chill, bud. No, but juice, but juice. No, no, no. Unlike Wayne's World, not a lot of thought went into the making of Encino Man. I got the idea while watching this picture that the filmmakers put together a list of standard teenage high school situations and simply plugged these guys into it. The film plays like a series of blackout sketches. I also found a little of this Pauly Shore as Stoney went a long way. <laughs> I could see a young actor doing an act which wasn't my experience while watching either Bill and Ted or Wayne's World. So thumbs down for me. Thumbs down for me, too. I found this movie really dreary and really yeah. slow and really uninteresting. And, you know, when you think about a guy actually being from hundreds of thousands of years ago and coming into the present day, you would expect him to do more once they shampoo him, shave him, and dress him up than stand around basically gawking at everything like a typical American teenager who simply doesn't speak English. They don't have any creativity in what they do with this character. Well, here's... The, I'm going to find a link between these two pictures. Okay. And that is, why not deal with the situation like it might really play out mm -hmm. with, with not real bright people, but... I, like, you know, people that are at least sentient. Mm -hmm. uh, wh why not have Whoopi Goldberg, to go back, why not have Whoopi Goldberg challenge the, uh, the religion of these characters, of the at nuns? Talk why about not it, have yeah. the nuns deal with her lack of organized religion? Yeah. Similarly, why not have this character be, you know, remote in all this and have the kids try and deal with him and have it become a science These project. two movies are almost like exercises in which the filmmakers are saying, how can I best make a typical movie like the formula for this yeah. genre? And what can I do to avoid doing anything original or anything different or anything challenging? And the question, of course, back to us would be, yeah, and your ideas are really going to sell a lot. Well, I tell you this. Wayne's World Wh sold. Yes. Wayne's World That's sold. That's my argument. Yes, Wayne's World did. had some fresh scenes that you wouldn't expect, and it's a huge hit. Coming up next, Alien 3 with Sigourney Weaver and another rematch against the spider from hell. <laughs> With the arrival of the next supply ship, the company would eliminate. This is a maximum security prison. And you have no weapons of any kind? Sigourney Weaver has just crash-landed on a prison planet in Alien 3, the third and least exciting, but in some ways the most interesting movie about that plague of spider-like monsters from outer space. Weaver's lifeboat has brought her to a shabby, dreary planet inhabited mostly by sex offenders, and she suspects there may have been a stowaway on her craft, another one of those loathsome, slimy creatures who have been crawling into her nightmares ever since the first alien in 1979. Cry What started the fire, Bishop? Can you hear me? The fire was electrical. That's Lance Henriksen, or what's left of him, as the shattered android who crash-landed along with her. After she learns an alien may have followed her, Weaver has trouble convincing the locals of the danger. Stop this radiant one! I'm Stop telling it. you! It's here! Mr. Aaron, get that foolish woman back to the infirmary! <laughs> Too much of the movie is devoted to footage like this, an alien's eye view in which we quickly realize that a human could outrun this creature only in the movies. Over in the east wing, don't be seven, safe! Alien 3 is probably going to be a disappointment to most of the fans of the first two movies because it's dark, depressing, grungy, 
and lacking in the kind of high-tension action that closed the first and especially the second movie. But there are interesting elements here, especially the art direction, which creates this prison world in shades of rust and mold and despair. It's a great movie to look at, but the chase scenes at the end are drawn out and repetitious, and so I have to give it a thumbs down. This is probably the best-looking bad movie I've seen in a while. Yeah, I had exactly the same reaction, too. Uh, I thought she did a real good job playing this character mm -hmm. again the third time, and she makes, it, it makes her character interesting a third yeah. time. But I didn't think there was anything supporting her, except maybe the look of the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, the monster had, didn't show me any new tricks, and I felt, as you said, that I was really watching just a monster at Loose in the House movie, and I got tired of it at the end. You know, I looked at uh, Aliens, the second right. movie, on Laserdisc not very long ago. The end of that movie really winds up with a lot of tension. She has to go back into that space uh, area station to try to rescue the little girl from the monster, and there's a lot of devious stuff going on. Remember when the monster figures out how to run the elevator? That was a great moment in that movie. Well, and in this film, it's just chase. They run around and around, and the monster yes. runs around after them, and uh, it, it goes on and on, and that's it. That's yeah. it. Coming up next, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman, co-star in Ron Howard's Irish epic, Far and Away. Never seen anything like you in all my living life. I suspect if you asked her to, she'd kick her knickers off. That, obviously, is Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman as feuding lovers in Ron Howard's Far and Away, an epic-sized romantic drama set in both Ireland and America near the turn of the century. Following two very different young people, one rich, one poor, with different reasons for wanting to come to America. And I'll tell you right away that I'm in the minority of critics on this film. I kind of like the picture. Why? The stunning physical landscape and the performance of Cruise and especially Kidman. He plays a working class lad whose home is burned down by agents of Kidman's wealthy father. And Cruise surprises her on her father's estate. Father! <laughs> Well, naturally, they soon hit it off, especially after she sneaks a peek at him while he recuperates at her home. <laughs> they both go to America, she to escape an arranged marriage, he to seek his fortune. He soon becomes a boxer, and she thinks he's just paid beef. Pickle you like a piece of pork. We're just losing you. Said that's enough. <laughs> They break apart, but are reunited during a great event, the Oklahoma land rush of 1893. Here's a genuinely bittersweet romantic scene. You know what you wanted back in Ireland. And look at you. Here you are. You're not a corner, Shannon. We're not a corner, you are. I like them together. I did even in Days of Thunder. Now, Tom Cruise's talent is often noted, but I'd like to put in a word for Nicole Kidman here. She plays characters that could easily be silly, just the attachment. But in her every picture, from the thriller Dead Calm too far and away, she displays some real grit, a reserve, a confidence that makes her more than an extension of the man she's drawn to. In fact, I'd argue that she's the real prize in her films, even when she is appearing with Tom Cruise. Far and Away looks great, shot on 65 millimeter film. A big problem, however, is its unrelenting Irish stereotypes of drinking and fighting. Boy, I got tired of that. But I still recommend the film for the romance. Yeah, I guess the Irish are still one ethnic group where you can, you know, <laughs> unbelievable, inevitably portray them. You know, he's an Irishman. He comes to Boston. What's he going to do? Get in a saloon fight within, you know, 30 yeah. seconds after he gets off the ship. Uh, I agree with you that this is a great-looking movie. I, you know, it might almost be worth looking at. I think so. Just for the scenery. But that's the only reason that I would go you to see it. You didn't find it oh, I thought the story was really cornball. These people are simple-minded, so simple-minded, they don't even realize that they come not only from two different classes, but two different religions. In Ireland in that time, he would have been a Catholic. She would definitely have been a Protestant. That would have been probably the most important issue in their lives. This movie never brings it up because he doesn't want to get involved in the oh. real world. It's just kind of like he's going to find Cinderella and they'll go off to the new world together and live happily well, ever I after without ever talking about anything of substance in the entire film. Uh, I agree with you that if they had, because that's the, the complaint I'm using to much lesser movies earlier in the show, yeah. so I'll, I'm not going to 
say that this film doesn't commit the same sin. But at the same time, I'm just talking about the level of, of interaction between the two of them. You didn't find them romantic. You well, didn't, here's you, the thing. Now, this movie looks as good as one of the great David Lean 70-millimeter pictures Ryan's like Ryan's Daughter, uh, like uh, Lawrence of Arabia. If it were only written at that level, if okay. it only it had a screenplay where two interesting and intelligent people are dealing with each other as human beings instead of as cliches out of old love stories, it could have been a terrific movie. Uh, it could have been written better. It could have been written brighter. I think the romance is there. I think there's a strength of character in her in particular that I found appealing. Okay, when we come back, a special report from this year's Cannes Film Festival, which premiered a lot of films Listen that we're going to be seeing this summer and autumn. There's two ways you can go on this job. My way or the highway. Which is not only a festival, but also the world's largest motion picture trade fair with thousands of people buying and selling the rights to movies that they hope are going to make them rich. The official image of the festival is of mobs of fans cheering their favorite stars. And there were a lot of stars to cheer, including Sharon Stone, Michael Douglas, Tom Cruise, and Nicole Kidman. But directors can be stars, too, and the veteran filmmaker Robert Altman got the festival's only standing ovation as he was named Best Director for The Player. John Turturro, who won the Best Actor Award here last year for Barton Fink, was back as a director and an actor this year and won the camera door as the best first-time filmmaker for his movie Mac, the story of his father and uncles and their construction business. I love it, Bill Levittown, Lazar, the Milstein brothers. Yeah, but those guys got money. They had money. Money. He didn't got no money. Guys didn't have money. They made money. Rome wasn't built in a day. Two brothers and a sheep. A sea wolf. And the palm door for best film went to another film about somebody's parents. That was Best Intentions, based on a screenplay by the legendary Ingmar Bergman about his mother and father, directed by Sweden's Billy August. Among other good or interesting films this year were Bob Roberts about a demagogic political candidate played by Tim Robbins, who also wrote and directed the film. Serafina, a powerful South African musical with Whoopi Goldberg and the dazzling new discovery Laletti Kamalo. Reservoir Dogs, about a gang of professional criminals who mess up a robbery in a really big way. I'm taking you back to the rendezvous. Joe's going to get you a doctor. The doctor's going to fix you up. And you're going to be okay. You can see Harvey Keitel there, and he also starred in my own choice as the best discovery of the festival, Bad Lieutenant, directed by New York's gritty, low-down Abel Ferrara, and starring Keitel in one of the performances of his career as a corrupt and desperate man. I want to get paid. What about tomorrow? What do you guys want to do? Want to make a bundle? Leave it all in the mess. And one thing about The Bad Lieutenant, Gene, this is definitely an NC-17 movie. I can't figure out any way they could possibly edit it for an R. And it needs to be NC-17 because it's a very serious and uncompromising portrait of this really bad lieutenant. Well, I hope that the NC-17 is preserved. And the only way it's going to take on any real meaning is if people don't cut their films down to R like Basic Instinct. I thought that was really an uh, unfortunate thing that they did yeah, there. Well, of course, at Cannes, I got to see the missing 45 seconds yeah. for Basic I've Instinct. I've heard it described, yeah. It made a difference between NC-17 and R. It made a difference, I think, only in the minds of people who use that in order to promote what they took out or left it in. It was a publicity gimmick. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, coming up, our video pick of the week, the thriller that made Nicole Kidman a star. In America, Nicole Kidman is probably best known as Tom Cruise's wife. But in movie circles, she's first thought of as Tom Cruise's wife. Just kidding. She's also known as the stalked woman in Dead Calm, a terrific 1989 thriller set on an open sea with just three characters, Kidman, her husband, and a killer from another boat who simply won't die. That's Billy Zane as the killer. And the special achievement of Nicole Kidman in Dead Calm is that she comes across much like Sigourney Weaver in the Alien series as one of the guys. Dead Calm is available on tape and disc. I recommend that you rent it. Now let's recap the movies we reviewed on this show. Two thumbs down for Sister Act, the thoroughly predictable Whoopi Goldberg comedy. Two more thumbs down for Encino Man, which similarly offers nothing fresh in its formula treatment of teenagers discovering a human relic. Two more thumbs down for Alien 3, a stylish sequel that turns into nothing more than a chase picture. And a split vote on Ron Howard's Far and Away. 
the Irish romance that I thought worked at its own level, but Roger would have preferred more developed lead characters so that Far and Away, at least we can agree on the look of Far and Away. Yeah, and there's, uh, I also like the look of Alien 3, and I like Whoopi Goldberg and Sister Act, but it wasn't a great week at the movies. That's no. it for this week. Next week we'll be back with Patriot Games with Harrison Ford and his family, targeted by terrorists. Also, an advanced look at our upcoming one-hour special on the new black cinema. We interview Whoopi Goldberg, Spike Lee, Wesley Snipes, and Boys in the Hood director John Singleton. That's going to be next week, and until then, the balcony is closed. Introducing new Jovan White Musk for Men. All the power, but not overpowering. Subtle, easygoing, unmistakably male. Shower yourself with a new sensation, new refreshing shield. Experience its unique skin-vigorating formula and feel the blast of pure refreshment. Sally Beauty Supply. More than 4,000 nail and hair care items for any kind of nails or any kind of hair. Sally. Salon quality, popular price. rice -a -roni, Any day of the week, the flavor can't be beat. rice -a -roni, the San Francisco treat.